See folks, delusion, delusion is a very thick cloud covering our uh, awareness, covering our ability to see things as they are. <clears throat> One of the biggest things to, uh, I guess, chew on, big bone to chew on, is this thing about not self. So the not self thing, sometimes I like to redefine it and use it in a different way. Uh, so I can understand it a little bit more when I'm contemplating it and hopefully this may help you as well Sometimes I replace not self or anatta with not mine In the sense of when you're doing a reflection when you're sitting down and doing a reflection or you're walking Or you're having a moment where you're engaging in in, in deep practice You can look at your body and ask yourself is it mine? Is consciousness mine? Are your thoughts, are they mine? Are the feelings, are these feelings mine? Right? Instead of saying not self. Right? It's the same kind of thing, but really, it, it uh, sometimes we need to change it up a bit in order to further our understanding of things. So as a human being, as a person, living in this, uh, in living in this world, things get, Things get out of hand, things get crazy, things can get quite intense at times, or most of the time. This so-called being simple, you know, simplifying. One plus one equals two, what we were taught in, you know, first grade mathematics. Sometimes, because these are the first things we've learned at school, in our, in our uh, I guess, in our conditioning, in the background, we tend to revert to always trying to make things simple, but uh, really... If you, even if you're a mathematician and you go to algebra and uh, trigonometry and you go even further into physics, you find that nothing is really, you know, nothing is really as it seems and calculations can be incorrect and so you have to recalculate. <clears throat> I'm not saying <clears throat> it's not, doesn't have its purpose. I mean, in, in construction, calculations and formulas uh, are very useful and very skillful and and in a lot of cases have kept structures up for thousands of years But that doesn't mean it works in like a I guess in a on the level of mind and uh, When you start to include all the complexities of life and we start to in, in, uh, Include all the actions and then the all the thought process and everything else. It's quite complex this thing this human being the Buddha always says, uh, this I am, this is myself, this is mine. It's just a delusion. It's not, it's not how it is. In fact, it's the opposite. It's not mine. Well, when you think about it, I mean, the big question, when you, th when you think about it and you really reflect, like, for example, uh, it gets kicked around when I go to heaven or when, I, when you go to hell. You know, the, the old question that seems to remain unanswered is what actually goes to hell and what actually goes to heaven I mean you look at the body you know, the body remains on earth the remains are here on earth it, they, it doesn't go anywhere so when we talk about what goes to heaven or what goes to hell what actually goes to heaven and what actually goes to hell or what actually is reborn now this is a great argument for the atheist theory uh, because this this makes it clear well the if the body doesn't go anywhere there is nothing right but in Buddhism it's not so because it's it, we're talking about vidya we're talking about chitta we're talking about mind we're talking about consciousness links but in fact <clears throat> excuse me but in fact in Buddhism it's kind of atheism in a way because we don't really reach out to gods for help. I mean, they can be our friends and we can ask them for help. Sure, like we could ask the person on the street for help. Not that I'm putting gods in the same class, but it's a different focus. The focus is to learn and understand and develop wisdom and, and uh, empower ourselves to our full capabilities and clear the fog of delusion. So when you're contemplating body, is it mine? Is it yours? Right? Is it yours? Is it mine? Right? And what about problems of the world? 
problems? Are they yours? You know, is it mine? Is it is? Did I create this world? Well, the answer is no. Are all the problems in the world mine? No, because if they were mine, I probably wouldn't have created them. Or maybe I would have. Who knows? But in any case, this is where things get kind of confusing and out of hand because when you start contemplating your position in the world, or at least when I do, when I contemplate my position in the world, I start to realize that whether I'm here or not, the world just goes on. Whether, whether I pass away, the world's not going to stop. And for those of you always seeking tranquil meditation or serene meditation, uh, good luck with that. Because when you meditate, the world just doesn't care. It just doesn't. Nature doesn't care. And that's very evident when you come out, especially to secluded places, when you sit down, the mosquitoes, the first thing that happens, the mosquitoes start surrounding you and uh, trying to get a good luscious meal. <laughs> and then you have all the other insects and then you have the weather itself, especially if you try to sit outside. Yeah? But even if you sit inside, there's all, there's all kinds of challenges as well. And then there's all, all the noise and everything else that comes and people visiting at spontaneous, with, in spontaneous times and things like this. The world doesn't stop just because you want to meditate or just because you think so. So it's not simple in that sense, right? You can try to seclude yourself in the most secluded parts of the world. You'll see that something will come and bother you at some point. So this tells us that it's out of our control. So if it's out of our control, it's not ours. It's not mine. Now this gets even more tricky and more, I guess, uh, astonishing because when we look at the process of life, like we're born and we're changing every day. I mean, if you look at yourself uh, as you progress every day, you're not like you were when you were a baby. And there's no control over this process, this evolvement. It just happens. And there's a continuous growing and changing and then there's a period of flourishing i guess health wise physical wise and then there's a period of degradation and uh, you know you, the body starts to uh, become entropic it starts to eat away at itself illness starts to occur and then we die right then we pass on the the, the elements are left here the remains are left here on earth so we're so in buddhism we talk about the citta now again, the Buddha doesn't make reference to soul or spirit, um, things like this, uh, when we when he talks about rebirth. He talks about more about it, the avijja, the avijja keeps going in terms of uh, codependent arising or independent origination, right? We're talking about if the avijja is present, the condition of avijja or the condition of ignorance is present, then sankharas, right? Fabrications with the with the condition with fabrications. With the condition of fabrications, there's consciousness and so forth, right? If you study uh, codependent arising or independent origination, depending on which book you read, but those factors as well, right? So when we bring it back to trying to work out, is it ours, right? This whole process, this citta, you know, it either goes to Nibbana, according to our text, and according to the Buddha's uh uh, according to Buddha's wisdom, if one is if one breaks away, if one destroys cause, right? If one is able to awake and see things as they are, chitta goes, mind goes to nibbana. But mind is not self. Mind is not mine, right? The body is not mine. The thoughts aren't mine. And if you think the thoughts are yours, try to hold on to them, right? Try to hold on to any thought for a period of time, for 24 hours, see if you can. <clears throat> it's very difficult. They come and go. Feelings come and go too, right? It's like a, a constant cycle. So this thing about being mine, this is mine, this is, uh, this is myself, this I am, <clears throat> it's actually a, a delusional construct. Now, of course, in the world, to exist, we've got birth certificates, names, and all these kind of things. And they're all useful in the world, but in ultimate truth, in true nature, they mean absolutely nothing. I hate to break it to you, but the brutal truth, the way I'm seeing it these days, is that it really doesn't mean much at all anyway, because when we die, there's a total abandonment 
of everything you've loved and everything you've owned and everything you've known to be a life, <clears throat> when we come to that last moment, we abandon everything. In fact, if you look at every moment of your life, you know, every hour that passes, you're abandoning, you're abandoning that previous moment at all times. As the body gets older, you're abandoning your youth. As you get older, you're abandoning this and you're abandoning that all the time. So the reality is the way I see it, okay, in my opinion, and according to what I've seen through practice and through study, and this is not something that is just uh, only a monk can, can, can see. I'm, I'm sure many people can see this, right? But really, we're leaving behind everything all the time really quickly. So when we talk about responsibilities and we talk about burdens, are they really ours? Are they necessary? That's a question. That's a question I have for you. Because I don't want to be seen or mis mistaken or misunderstood as saying, um, don't be a responsible person. Don't pay your bills. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't work hard. You know, I'm not talking about that. But that burden of the world, it's come to be because of ignorance. So again, the fabrications, the consciousness, uh, the name and form, the six sense bases, all these kind of things have come to be because of not knowing. When you know, the cause, the cause is broken, there's a shift. Click, clinging, craving has been set, has been laid to rest. You've dropped the burden of the problems, of the big problem. So what I'm getting at is when you do a reflection, when you when you're really kind of stuck in a quagmire of problems or emotions, or there's you're not sure about the direction of your life. Well, again, direction of your life, it's not your life. It just we, we're passing through. It's a one-way ticket. Now, I know this may be brutal to some, and those who aren't really uh, deep into the Buddhist teachings might find this quite controversial and quite challenging to accept, right? So I have empathy for you. But bear with me, because what we're trying to lead to, <clears throat> what we're trying to lead to is freedom and our full capability as, a, as human beings, but also more than that, because... The chitta well, the chitta well, like the arahant, can do many, many things, right? Like the Buddha could. Not the same, but I want to make comparisons between the arahant and the Buddha. But basically, when we're coming to the realization of what is really going on here is what we're trying to talk about. What is really going on? When you're stuck in it all, <clears throat> you've... You've tied yourself to a lot of things. <clears throat> You've created more burden for yourself with ties and connections and this and that. Sometimes you need to quickly pull out of that. Like a like a turtle like a turtle. When it all gets too much, the turtle puts its head in its uh, little shell. <laughs> doesn't the world doesn't go away. But at least for that moment you think you've got some peace. Well that's see that's not <clears throat> we're aiming for. But the metaphor basically is retreat. Retreat into yourself and let it all go for a while and have a good look at what is actually yours. What is actually your problem? What is actually my problem? You know, sometimes I sit there and think, what, are, what is actually my, 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 uh, my mission and my role in life? And if you haven't got that sorted out for yourself, it's very difficult to go any further. It's very difficult to find you know, I guess sense in what's going on out there and how to behave and how to navigate. But see, this is where the teachings of the Lord Buddha shine because the Buddha says that dukkang, right? Dukkang, stress, suffering, pleasure is still dukkang, sukkang, adukkha masukkang, <clears throat> right? Is dukkang. So even pleasurable things, because they're <clears throat> not lasting, they're short, they're impermanent, they're dukkha. Like, <clears throat> like uh, 
like the statement gets kicked around. First the ecstasy, then the agony, right? It's like someone who works uh, 50 weeks a year and then takes two weeks off and blows all the money on the holiday. <laughs> then has to work another 50 weeks to save up, right? Something like that, right? Now, of course, I'm not trying to be cynical. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just trying to show that there's a better way. That wisdom, wisdom and knowing can take us to better things. And some, <clears throat> in some texts, they say the, the light of wisdom, there's nothing like it. That's what I'm talking about. Right? I'm talking about these kind of things. And I'm trying to help others uh, by doing these videos to try to help you see, or I guess help but share, that uh, when you sit down and have a good look at yourself, you find, you'll find things that are true. They're brutal and they're true. And that's why even the Buddha when he first enlightened, I think the the saying that who's going to understand a, a, this truth so subtle? And I guess that's what it's all about, in a lot of ways, is how subtle it is, right? It's very subtle. It's hard to hard to kind of lock into, because delusion is like a thick fog. It's like very thick and sticky, right? Fog, you know, it's thick and thick and sticky. It's humid. It sticks to everything. Whereas true nature is not like that. <clears throat> the chitta is pure and clear, right? Beyond feeling, beyond thinking, beyond the body, beyond consciousness, right? So these kind of things we need to know for ourselves, I believe, because if, <clears throat> if you don't know what's yours, what's really yours or what's really mine? You've, how do you... Uh, how do you function and how do you go about your life? I mean, these are basic questions. These are questions we should have known we should be contemplated at the age of five. Not later on in life and adults and go, where did it all go wrong? Well, the basic question is, what is yours? When you ask yourself, what is mine? If you don't know that, then how is it possible to, to go any further with clarity, right? The idea is to understand that Right? In Buddhism, we're talking about a thing called Nibbana. We're talking about cessation of Dukkha, Nirodo. Right? We're talking about unbinding, dropping the burden, letting go. Right? <clears throat> Mental seclusion. We're talking about all these things. Okay, Things that in our societies are not really talked about that much. Uh, we're just taught to go, 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 go. And then, and then come the time of death... <clears throat> it's too late to do any practice or any contemplation, right? So this is what, you know, there's, there's a danger here. There's dangers here that we need to be aware of. There's also the danger of acting without awareness, right? There's also the danger of creating, you know, bad consequences for ourselves. There's also the danger of not understanding things <clears throat> and acting whilst not understanding things, which is dangerous, don't you think? How many times have you acted or on something and then later <clears throat> you reflect on it and you regret it? Because you didn't know, you know, hindsight, the old cliche, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Only if you knew, right? But there's a reason for that cliche, right? <clears throat> hindsight, or that word, hindsight. So this is what we're trying to figure out <clears throat> for ourselves. This is why the path of the wholesome is important in Buddhism. That's why understanding the parameters. Now, if you don't understand what the body is and what the and what this apparatus is, it's very difficult to act with it, or 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 or, or I guess function. You know, with a group of other bodies in the world. You know, a body within bodies. A body within bodies, right? So, I ask you, are the problems of the world yours? Is the body yours? Are your thoughts yours? Are your feelings yours? Is life yours? Is death yours? Is experience yours? What is actually yours? It's a very interesting thing to ponder, and I hope you find the answer for yourself.